I was shocked and horrified. I never thought in a million years that something like this could happen in New Zealand. We can, we can stop if you need to stop. So I was born in New Zealand, or in Auckland, and um, I'm a lawyer now. Yeah, I found out the news when um, I was actually, I was at, at my mosque for Friday prayers, and as I'd finished, I saw a text from my mother to say that um, we had um, a shooting in Christchurch, and at that point I didn't register the gravity or the scope of it, and I thought it may have been a minor issue. And when I got back to my office, that's when I first found out um, how big the scale of it was and and then I unfortunately watched the 17 minute video clip as well and that uh, that really horrified me why did you why did it feel important to you to see inside the mosque and see what had happened to be honest I started watching the video clip without knowing what it was to, uh, at first and then it I was I was shocked to the point that I couldn't put my phone down and yeah, some of the images um, are still with me and it's quite terrifying. Many people have watched the video. What would you say to people who are not Muslim, who don't understand, perhaps don't know what the inside of a mosque is like? What would you say to them about having watched that footage? Well, I'd say that that doesn't represent a mosque at all. That, uh, what happened in there was a literal war zone, and to anyone that wants to see what our beautiful mosques looks like, um, they're more than welcome to come to any of our mosques. I'm just going to ask you one more thing about the footage, and I know it's really hard, and I'm really sorry to have to ask you about it, but what is it that has stayed with you about that footage? Just the things that he did to the people, and that's all I'm going to say on that. I don't want to be too graphic, but yeah, just the things that he did to the people, the way he um, treated our mosque, our, our safe haven, to just, to just sickening, absolutely sickening. The centre that was set up, mm -hmm. um, can you give us a sense of what is happening inside, what people are doing inside, what kind of things are going on? So the centre behind me is just um, a place for the uh, survivors and the victims' families to come together and the community in general and just to grieve together, so as to speak. Just to give you a number, around about 5pm yesterday we had about four to 500 people in there. It's pretty busy. Very busy. What are people doing? Oh, well, there are people that are praying, there are people that are just sitting together having a chat, just ensuring that everyone else is... Um, coping and yeah. How are people coping? I, it sounds like a trite question, I'm sorry, but how, how are people trying to begin to process what has happened? Well, I guess I don't think anyone has really started to process what's happened. I guess it's, it's difficult for us that have lived in New Zealand all their lives to even start to imagine what uh, what has happened or what our mosques look like or what our mosque looks like inside because um, we've always seen this um, on TV and on the internet happening to other places um, whether it be to us as Muslims or to other societies but um, we never thought that something like this could ever happen here and that was probably the biggest shock uh, that each and every one of us uh, are faced with. I guess to some extent there must be it must be quite busy, there must be quite a lot of activity. Are there people being fed? Are there people um, talking? What, what is it like to, to be inside, perhaps in an evening, like yesterday evening? So there's um, a lovely bunch of volunteers that are helping out wherever they can and they, st uh, they come from all over, all over New Zealand and Australia as well and there's groups that are helping with the catering, there's groups that will be helping with the burial process and all that and yeah so there's a lot of volunteers that are just doing whatever little they can do. Are all of the people who are involved and have come, are they all Muslim? 
No, definitely not. We've got a steady stream of non-Muslims that uh, just come by, give flowers and bring food for us. And yeah, so the support and love that Christchurch has shown us, and not only Christchurch, in fact, the entire New Zealand is just heartwarming. How are people making sense of what has happened? Oh, yes, yeah, so um, we've got... Um, a, a bunch of people from the district health board, councillors that are willing to provide services for free, lawyers as well that are giving uh, uh, visa visa advice and all that for families that are wanting to come in from overseas um, on a pro bono basis. So um, yeah, we've got everyone from all works of life, everything that, uh, yeah, all works of life just volunteering and helping out. What are some of the stories that you have heard in your time here that will stay with you? I guess um, on Sunday night I met a gentleman that was the last survivor from the Dean's Avenue Mosque and the way he described what he did when he came in the second, the third time around and all that, that was really difficult for me to process.